Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. So this video is part two of me doing a craft show. If you haven't seen part one, I'll put the link in the description below and you can go watch it now or you can watch it after, whatever you wanna do. So I had a craft show over the weekend and it went really, really good. I haven't done this show before, so I kinda didn't know what to expect, but I was hoping it would be good. And I thought it was very busy. It lasted from nine to five. So I was kind of thinking after lunch, it would slow down and it really didn't. It stayed busy until about four o'clock and the show ended at five. So to me, that was, that was great. And um, I kind of wish they would have had to show on Sunday because I have a feeling it would have been just as good. And for all that work, a two day show would have been great, especially indoor show where you can just close the doors, leave everything, come back the next day. So I really wish it would have been two days, but that's okay. Um, sorry y'all, I had to pause filming for a minute because I saw a message pop up on my phone that said, from somebody that said, hey, not to be nosy, but what's going on at the kid's school? Like, what do you mean what's going on at school, kid's school? I didn't hear nothing, so I had to go do a little Facebook investigating, and it's actually not at the school, it's at the park next door. They handing out free food, so there's like cars and people everywhere. <laughs> How are you gonna send somebody a message like that when their kids are at that school? <laughs> anyway, back to the show. Um, I got a few notes right here if I'm looking uh to the side that's what i'm looking at so the show went good I, like i said i wish it was two days i think that would have been amazing it took me and my friend y'all she was so good if i do any more shows she's coming with me um it took us about three maybe three hours and 15 minutes to set everything up which is not bad and I was worried I had too much stuff, but I feel like I had just the right amount. Of course, I didn't sell it all. I still got a little bit, actually more of a mess going on here because I just unpacked everything and put it out and I hadn't set it back up yet. Um, and it took us about an hour and a half to shake everything down and pack it up. Now, on the day of the show, my husband came help me. I like bringing him do the shows with me because it kind of gets him on board more of what I'm doing when he sees the money side of it. Like it's not just junk laying everywhere, it's money. So when he sees how much money can be made, like he's a little bit more uh, accepting of the junk and the mess that comes with doing this. Cause as much as I try to keep it to a minimum, I mean, it's just a messy job. That's how it is. So when me and my husband, actually, let me tell y'all how we set up um, with two people. The big show that I talked about doing, they actually have guys there to help you unload, which is amazing. So they kind of unload everything and bring it to your booth and put it around your booth. So it takes absolutely no time to unload. But this show isn't like that. So what we ended up doing was she unloaded and I started putting stuff out since I kind of knew where stuff was going. And once she's finished unloading, then she helped me put stuff where it goes. Like if I knew specifically where something went, then she would take care of that where I would kind of do the stuff that I didn't know exactly where it would go and we just like made it look good. And then when we were taking it down, my husband was bringing stuff to the car and putting it in there and then would come back. And I knew, I knew it was gonna happen. So his third trip, I had, he, we had like a little fold up wagon. If you don't have one of those, they are a must. They just fold up flat, you unfold them. I use them for shows, soccer, baseball, whatever. Um, so he comes back on his third trip with the wagon. I had completely taken about down the whole booth. I had everything packed up, all display items down. He's like, how in the world did you fit all this stuff in your car? There ain't no way. There ain't no way we getting all this stuff home. I'm like, dude, hold my blood and Mary. Watch this. I fit everything in my car. Needless to say, <laughs> man, they are so funny. So they just don't know how to pack. They just don't know how to pack like we do. So anyway, we fit all the stuff back in my car and then some of this display pieces we put in his truck because I was just easier. So yeah, it wasn't a bad takedown. And um, let's see. All right, I wanna give y'all um, a few tips on some stuff that I, I might've missed since I ended up posting the first video. I had a few questions. Um, 
So I figured I'd just go ahead and answer those on this video in case anybody else is wondering the same thing. Okay, taxes and like business ID numbers and all of that. Do you need all that? It just depends on the show. So what I would do if you're interested in a show, just get an application and you'll be able to see what information you need. In my experience, I find the bigger shows require less information than the small hometown shows. And as far as taxes and all that, they just give you paperwork, usually the day of the show, that you just fill out and mail in. So it's really no big deal. Um, also, how much to make of each item. Okay, I have great experience with this. So in the first video, I talked about how I did that huge show that I paid $600 for and I made like $10,000 of products. Well, I made like 20 of the same item and I will never ever do that again because it's too much. I am still trying to sell some Christmas stuff from that show. Even though I sold a ton of it, when you're making 20 of the same thing that you don't even know yet if it's gonna be popular is not a good idea. Now, my things that I know are popular, like my Christmas ornaments and my oyster nativity sets, I will gladly make like 40 of those because I know they're gonna sell. But you don't wanna do that if you don't know yet if it's gonna be a popular item. So I would say five max of an item. And that should be good. If it sells out, amazing. Maybe next time you'll make like seven or something. But 20, you don't need to make 20, trust me. Like that, that's too much. Just make a few, move on to the next thing and just have more variety. And also what was weird with this show is a lot of times I find like there's something that is super popular. Like I thought for sure those Christmas trees, the Cypress ones would sell out. I mean, I did sell some, but there was nothing that was super popular. Not even my ornaments or my oyster nativity sets were like overly popular. Like everybody just bought a little of everything. It was a little bit strange, but that's fine. Um, so yeah, I thought that was a little bit weird, but I talked to a lot of vendors and they said this year's just been, it's been weird. Like it hasn't been like the normal shows they've done in the past. Uh, the buyers are different. People are different with their money. So I don't know. I mean, it's fine. Like I'm cool. I sold about half my stuff. If like one item didn't sell out, that's okay. Um, you also definitely want to make friends with the vendors. I love walking around, talking to vendors. They will tell you what shows uh, they've done best at so you can kind of see what else is around you and what experiences those people had at those shows. That is a great thing to do if you want to do more shows. And I always, vendors are also your customers. I always give my fellow vendors a good deal if they want to buy anything. I also try to go and shop for, from them as well. You want to see a few things I bought. Mostly for the baby, because, you know, that's fun. So she actually already wore this, and it looked adorable on her. Look at the back. How cute. So I bought this. I didn't have too much time to walk around, so I pretty much just shopped the people right next to me, because, like I said, it was busy almost the whole time. So they had this lady that crocheted, and I bought this cactus for my 10 year old girl and for the baby I bought y'all. It was the cutest crocheted sandwich and it had a little face on it. I already gave it to the baby to play with and I could not find it to show in this video. So it is somewhere in my house, God knows where, but I couldn't find it. And then this is gonna be one of her Christmas presents. It's called a Warmy and y'all it smells so good. It's filled with the lavender scent and like warming uh, little beads. So she could play with it like this, but it's really to like go to sleep. You can put it in the microwave and it warms up and you just put it with them to go to sleep. Oh, it's like heavy and almost feels like a real baby. I wish she had blue eyes because then she would look like the baby. But yeah, this is, I paid $26 for this and this is going to be one of her little birthday presents. I just thought it was so cute. It reminded me of her besides the blue eyes, of course. And then my husband bought this for my little boy. It is a little Cypress P-Rog. So if you don't know what a P-Rog is, I'm pretty sure that's something like specific to the South Bayou. It's like a boat that is super light um, where you could get around in the swamp and stuff like that. So he was, he was really excited about this. 
And when I went to get it out of his room to show it on this video, he found the perfect spot for it. So he has this like old vintage desk that we use as a nice end. He just put it on top of there. I'm like, oh, so cute. He's being a little decorator. All right. Let's see what else I got to talk about. Um, oh, I got to meet some of y'all. I had a few people that watched me on YouTube come and they got to meet me at the show and I got to meet them and it was super fun. That was exciting to be able to meet some of y'all. What I did at the end of the show, because like I said, around four o'clock it slowed down and I was looking around like, okay, I sold a lot, but I still got a lot left. So what I did was I went live on my Facebook business page and I went around and showed everything I had left and gave them the price. And I was like, if you want this, message me um, on this page. I'm going to go through my messages. So the first one I received to the last one I received. And that worked out great because I already had a lot of stuff sold by the time I got home. So on Saturday night, I didn't do nothing. Like we were exhausted. And Sunday, I unpacked. And I got everybody's stuff out that they wanted and sent them their totals and all that. So a lot of stuff is already sold and I've already scheduled a live Facebook sale for Wednesday. So I'm going to go and um, sell a lot more of this stuff on my Facebook sale. Now I've already decided I'm not doing any more shows for the rest of the year. I have the bug and I want to so bad, but I'm going to have to say no because... I just feel like the writing's on the wall. Like things are going to start getting shut down again. I feel like the schools are going to get shut down again. So I don't want to put any more time and energy into doing any more craft shows this year. It is just too unpredictable. So I had kind of been holding back posting stuff on my Facebook business page because I was kind of trying to stock up for the show. So mo no more of that, that. I'm going to try to sale as much as possible on my Facebook sale on Wednesday to just kind of clear stuff out. Some stuff I'll be lowering the prices on, but some stuff I won't. But I just want to make room to make more stuff because that's what I like doing. I don't want to keep making the same thing over and over again. I have lots more ideas in my head, so I want to continue to work, but I don't want as much stuff in my outside kitchen. Like it was so nice to see it clean so I want to keep it to a minimum. I, I put my baker's racks up already. I need to put a grid here and I'm going to try to keep it to this area and just sell stuff quickly. That way I don't have too much bulk in my outside kitchen so we can kind of enjoy this space and it doesn't look like a craft explosion. So I think that is everything that I wanted to talk about. The rest of this video is just going to be clips of us setting up, from the show and things like that. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video and I hope um, y'all find it informative. And if you have any more questions, just comment down below and I will be more than happy to answer y'all questions. So I just got to the event and I found my booth. I have a few surprises. Apparently I paid for a table that I don't need. I'm not sure why I paid for that or why I have it. And there's no pipe and drape. I didn't realize that, but that's okay. But this is my booth. It's a corner booth, which is amazing. First time having a corner booth. I'm excited about that. And that is the entrance right there. And he told me they will be direct in traffic and it'll have to come down. Everybody will be coming down my aisle first and then they'll work their way around. So that is amazing news. So we're gonna go ahead. That's the unloading area over there. We're gonna go ahead and start unloading everything now. All right, me and my friend are rocking it. We only been here for a little bit of time. We already got all the display items unloaded and set up. So I decided to do like the grid system here where I could kind of have stuff on both sides on this one. And then for stability, I put the baker's racks in the middle of each grid system. So they are attached to the baker's rack and my little gift shop gift item thing is going to be on the end right here. So now we're going to go unload my car that has all the goodies in it and figure out where that's going to go. That's the kind of stressful but fun part.
It is 3.20 and we finished setting up. My friend was so helpful. I'm gonna have to bring her to every show with me because we got stuff done so fast. And she didn't feel like she was decorating stuff right, but I disagree, she was very good at it. So when you first walk up, you got like the little gift thing right here. And then I kind of have like a center aisle with some baskets and stuff in it. Then I have my bench with all of my cypress trees and a little tiered tray. And then on this side, we got spindle boxes. We have cypress breadboards. I kind of, since I have so many breadboards, I kind of spread them throughout, but where you can still see all of them. And then I have kind of like a little water section right here. Then for some height, I put like big candlesticks and things right here. Then I have my baker's racks with just different stuff on every single shelf. Then I have my two picnic baskets right here filled with stuff. And then here is kind of like the Christmas sign section where I got Christmas signs and then also Christmas ornaments, some Christmas candlesticks. So just different stuff up here. Have another baker's rack with stuff on every single shelf. And then some little baskets and stuff there. Some more signs tissue boxes. I was excited because I felt like I had way too much stuff and I didn't know how I was going to fit it all but I feel like my booth is still very open and I was able to display everything in a way that is pleasing and not too cluttered. This is my favorite little spot right here where I have the two little benches and then my two chairs and then we just like lean stuff up against it. It came out really cute. And then this is another part of the aisle where we put one grid system and then I put my best sellers. So I have the Louisiana oyster sign, the tissue boxes, the oyster nativity sets, the may I, I made that sign, and then bread boxes and a spindle box and one Christmas tree. So this is what it looks like if you're coming from this way. They said you'd have to come into the door and then come on my aisle first. I don't know how strict they're going to end up being with that, but we'll see. So it's Saturday morning. It's 8.20. I just got to the venue. Um, I stopped at Subway to pick up breakfast. You want to make sure you eat good. I usually don't eat breakfast till 9, but um, like I don't know when I'm going to get to eat again. So I picked up some food for me and my husband. He's on his way. He's coming in his truck. I mean, hopefully I sell a lot of stuff and don't need two vehicles to bring everything home but you don't want to take that chance so he's coming in his truck he's going to be helping me for the day and yeah I, all everything's set up so all i have to do is go in i'm gonna sit in my car eat my breakfast i'm gonna go in just make sure everything still looks good just get myself ready maybe shop a little bit so yeah it definitely helps to go set up the day before because then literally all you have to do is get here and it's stress-free so that's always great all right well i am going to eat my breakfast and i will see y'all inside yay All right, there's about 20 minutes left in the show, but um, people are starting to pack up. So I'm gonna go ahead and show y'all kind of what's left. Oh, look, there's my man coming with my Bloody Mary. You know we in Louisiana when they selling Bloody Marys at a craft show. Ooh, ooh, look at that. Yes, we're gonna drink and pack up. That's how you do it around here. All right, okay, I need you to hold it while I film though. Max, say hi to YouTube. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> 
so it, it looks like I got a lot left, but I sold a lot. I mean, it doesn't matter how much you bring or how little you bring, there's still gonna be stuff to pack up. So, but what I did was I went live on Facebook just now. So that way, hopefully a lot of this stuff I have left over will be sold. Of course, I gotta pack up. I won't be able to check my messages till later, but my phone was going crazy. So hopefully I sold a lot of this. You can see there's a lot of empty spaces. I have a few trees left, not many. These benches didn't sell, but I'm not 100% sure people knew they were for sale. But I don't mind because they look so adorable in my booth. This wreath is still here, and if it doesn't sell on the live, I'm keeping it because I just love this. Doesn't it look like baby's breath? Adorable. So, yeah, good show. I'm very happy. I haven't counted my money yet. So I don't know what I made, but I feel like I did well. All right, I'm going to drink my Belay Mary while we pack up. Okay, I realized I didn't talk about what I made at the show, which I'm not going to tell y'all exactly what I made, but I did very, very well. I went, so at the in the first video, I talked about how you should make at least 10 times the amount that you paid for the show. And I made way more uh, product than that and also sold more product than that. So for me, that is definitely a success. And I did half cash and almost exactly half credit card. So if you do not have a square, you definitely should have one of those if you're doing a show. Now they do take a percentage of your sales. I can't remember if it's like 5% or 2% or something, but y'all, it doesn't matter. Like you're tripping over dollars to save pennies if you don't get one of these cards because I would have lost all those sales had I not done it. So yeah, you definitely want to get one of those. You want to make sure you have change Oh, when you take cash. And then I also had like my Venmo QR code. So people, the younger generation just loves that Venmo. So all they do was scan that and they venmo me. So that was super easy. So yeah, I just wanted to quickly add that into this video. Thanks for watching and give this video a big